Hello, everybody, and welcome to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. It's the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and showcase awesome speedruns of games released in the same year. I am your host, Smooth Operative. We are diving right back into the year 2000 tonight with speedruns of The Emperor's New Grove and later Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards. But of course, before we begin, we must cover a few GDQ announcements. First of all, Juneteenth, our annual event celebrating Black Independence, is coming up June 17th and 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern. So join us as we highlight the amazing talents of the Black speedrunning community. Again, that is the weekend of June 17th and 18th. So please mark your calendars. Also, we are currently looking for new hotfix shows and showrunners. You can use the command exclamation mark hotfix in Twitch chat or go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix to submit your ideas. And this includes bi-weekly shows, limited show runs such as Ocarina Improv, one day events as well. Submissions made before June 13th will be considered for these open show slots. So make sure you get that done in the next week if you are interested. And if you missed out on any of the fun from SGDQ 2023, be sure to check out the VODs on our YouTube, youtube.com slash games done quick. Subscribe so you don't miss out on all the speedrun goodness. But right now, my friends, it is time for the Emperor's New Groove Any% Percent by Orion YTP. So Orion, why don't you take it away, my friend? All right. Thank you very much. So hello, my name is Orion YTP, and I have with me Mr. The Dank as my comment. Yes. Is. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Hello. This, so, th what am I looking at? This is the Emperor's New Groove, <laughs> uh, a licensed game based on the movie of the same name. It's about an emperor named Cusco, um, who is whoopsie. So, he is a llama that gets trans. He's a human that gets transformed into a llama, and he has to go on a quest to gain back his throne. It's a linear three D platformer where you, about thirty levels then that are divided up into eight worlds. We just go through all of them until we beat the game. This game has a bit of an unorthodox uh, way of starting the time, so I'll give a three, two, one, go. And that will be three, two, one, oh. go. Booyah! Good luck. All right. Oh, Orion, are you going to stream the game to me directly? Or... I... We uh, uh, we posted it in the uh, Discord, Mr. The Bank, so just check out that got link. You. We got you. <laughs> All right, so here we, we're we just rolling the wrong. Fast way to move is either by rolling or charging. And we have a troll skip that causes a lot of resets. Gate skip. But we slid right by. Now we have this brat we have to take down with some charge. The infamous bike kid, the, yes. The infamous bike brat. He gives us a red idol, which is used to open doors. You're probably wondering why we're going to death warp and backtrack our way. We're just going to leap off. And hey, look, it's the end of the level. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, there's lots of strange level geometry where you can do leaps of fate or just yeet yourself off and you end up safe somewhere else completely different in the level. You're going to be seeing a lot of that. The devs thought they were really clever trying to hide them like that, but... Oh, here, here, here comes another good example, right here. Right. Trust the long jump, and Orion is going. It, that was pretty smooth, honestly. Nice and clean. I love this game's movement. You'll be noticing that I'm jumping when I use the charge, so that way I get to conserve it. Almost done with this level. Just need to get a quick use of iframes to... Um, I was not supposed and Village to do 2 that. is done. That's that's how quick it goes. <laughs> yeah, this game flies by very quick at the beginning. So now we have Village 3. This is supposed to be an introduction to the different types of animals you can turn into. But we're going to do something a bit unorthodox here. I missed the trick. So this is a secret yeah. area where you're normally just supposed to get coins, which really don't do much to the any percent run. But however, if you go into look mode as you enter it, the camera doesn't like instantly snap to Cusco. He just he has to travel, which on its way, the camera picks up Kronk, who who will challenge us to a race. So we're it is, it's very precise, the whole look mode thing that Orion just did. And now the the fact that we see Llama Cusco at all in this part of the level, when it's supposed to be just the turtle. This is supposed to be the race with the turtle. Whoops. Uh as someone who's played this game since my childhood, it kind of feels like a fever dream just looking at this. The Llama Cusco in this section. Llama yeah, this 
Normally, you're supposed to be a turtle just racing him, and it's kind of an auto-scroller, but now we actually have to have good movement because Kronk is very fast. Kind of Also, good I charge got. management. There, there are no charge potions here, right? Because it's supposed to be just for the turtle. Right. I don't think I'm, I don't think doing the wompy thing is worth it. Oh, so you're almost gonna, there. We're just gonna do this. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Cusco? <laughs> Cusco contorts his entire body. Oh, wow. it's, it's basically him trying to play the turtle animations. There is a oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. There is a thing I could have done to skip this cutscene if I had better charge management, but unfortunately, we're just gonna have to watch this all unfold. Might be we'll make up for it in other cutscenes that we can skip later, sure. Now we get our introduction to up warping, which allows us to... Excuse me. Excuse me. Boom, baby. This might take Whee! me a minute. Yeah. Right, so up warping was discovered, was it earlier this year? Or maybe a bit no, it was back, a year ago? It was back in like 2022. Yeah, year ago. Right, right. It, it, it honestly completely changed the meta for the speedrunning. Orion just... Did his upwork successfully. Now we don't have to talk to Pacha. We don't have to talk to the child. We're going straight to Isma in this room. Except not and really. And another upwork. Yeah, except not really because he's about to do another upwork just over uh, over this gate. There we go. Yeah. And village is that's the end of village. Leading us into it is that the simple. spooky jungle with spiders. Yeah. Orion makes it look easy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've invested a lot of time into this game, for better or worse. I love this game. Yeah, same. Absolutely, yes. Did Cusco turn into an eldritch horror? For yes, for a moment, because like Orion said, it's supposed to be the animation for the turtle, but we skipped the turtle potion completely. Nice little Very strange. Jump here? I almost missed that. Oh, yeah. I was worried when you hit the tree. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Alright, we're coming up to Love another pretty big skip. We the don't waterfall need this skip. To cross yeah. the waterfall, we just take a nice little damage boost. Yeah. The leaps of faith oh, are so satisfying. <laughs> or the yeets, whatever you want to call them. Boom, baby. I love this game's dialogue. For sure. They actually have Jungle a Knight good 2. actor for Cusco. Oh, uh. Yeah, it's not it's not David Spade. He was in the movie. This is uh, JP Manu. He also did Cusco in the TV show Emperor's yes. New School. Yeah, yeah. They didn't get a few of the original actors like uh, Yzma the villain and Kronk. So oh yeah, Eartha Eartha Kid as Yzma. Yeah, she's in this. So now we're just this is one of the longer levels, so this will be a very convoluted route as we build a statue to drain the lake. Ow! Ow. Ow. Sometimes that happens and there's not much you can do about it. <laughs> this is a level that really rewards good charge management. Another nice little up warp. <laughs> no need for the boulder. Oh, of course, it's the bike kid once again. Oh, yeah. And surely this will be the last time we see him. Surely, like, there's no way he'll survive these two boulders, right? Right? Oh, wait. We... Ah, <laughs> uh, I, I was too far away, so I got teleported. Some of you may notice, uh, there's a lot of, like, little nuances that I do in this game that it's hard to, like, go over everything, but something you'll notice is after, like, every level I complete, it you're supposed to be taken to a level status screen, but I'm pressing F4 on the keyboard to go back to the map screen, which saves a little bit of a second now over the course of the entire run, so it adds up to, like, 20. Another nice right. up here. Yeah, and the, the F4 strats can be a little risky, because if you misclick it, like, if you do F4 at the wrong moment, then you will just go back to the previous level. And you would have to, uh... Which I've done or... more times than I like to admit. Right. Thank you, unskippable cutscene. I'm glad that's over. <laughs> Upwards really cut out a lot of filler from this run. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Just makes the run just even more fast paced. Nice little damage boost here. Ow. Ouch. <laughs> jump here, jump here. Yeah. Jump here. This this level has a lot of uh, maneuvering 
through the labyrinths and whatnot. Later we will see, oddly enough, Jungle Day Chapter 2. Feels very similar to Jungle Night Chapter 2. I cannot afford to back that up. That was a bit of a silly. <laughs> There's our idol array. That would be much more punishing. That was much more punishing before all forms were found. Oh, totally. <laughs> Alright, we're almost done here. Sometimes that spider can, like, jump scare you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, Right well, when you think you're free. We're almost done with Jungle Knight. Anyone who's ever played this game as a kid will probably remember getting stuck on this level. This is the infamous Jaguar level, where you, oh, where no. you have to mash the buttons very quickly and steer. I played this game with the a night controller here, so you can just see me just spamming all four face buttons here. Right. Funny thing about that, the game doesn't tell you that you could spam multiple buttons. It just tells you to use the oh, space bar. It does but... use buttons, plural, so I guess technically... They just let they just let they implied it. <laughs> here's a here's an extra life called a it's Cusco's little wompy plushie. We're gonna need that for later. Yeah. I, I I was hoping I could have gotten one in Village Three, but I ah, but that's okay. I should just gotten it, that we'll anyway, we'll, but... we'll find more in River very soon. Uh, speaking of which, yes. Huh. Grab okay, your now we get to the pillow. Yeah, after the. This... After the stress that was Jungle Knight 3, we get to we get to relax a little bit in the river levels. Oh my goodness, this run has been absolutely wild so far, I have to say. <laughs> and I'm actually wondering, Orion, what was your process going through this game and learning the speedrun, you know, coming from maybe playing it casually first? Uh, it's a good question because um, this is not my first speed game. I, I come from the SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom community, which is a, a very highly technical speedrun and also very movement based. But I was looking into other potential speed games to learn at the time. Sorry, you can hear my dog barking in the background. Don't mind that. But. Tasty. And then I was looking into this game because I grew up with it as a kid and I'm like, I wonder how this is a run. The world record at the time was like in May 2021. It was a one hour, one minute time by uh, Skywards. Shout out to him. I saw it. I'm Skywards, like, yeah. I was immediately hooked. <laughs> So now, is I, the community for this like very big, or is it more like of a, a niche kind of speedrun? It like, is a very niche speedrun. It's I would call it niche still today. It's, yeah, it's very <laughs> tightly knit. When I first started running it, there wasn't even a Discord server. So yeah, it I, was Orion who made the Discord back in 2021, right? Right on. Yeah, was, so then, yeah. if someone wanted to join, um, how would they go about doing that? Just getting on the speedrun.com page? Right. So you just go on speedrun.com and search up the Emperor's New Groove. You'll find our our Discord server up there, where we we have a small but tight knit community of anyone who's of speedrunners who are willing to help anyone out with learning the game and learning yeah. about it, including That's myself. <laughs> That's awesome. I love to hear it when uh, a community is supportive of new runners. So if you hear that chat, if you're interested, uh, make sure you join the Discord. And I oh yeah, say... absolutely. I'll, I'll vouch for what Orion's saying, because even though it's fairly small at this point, we're still discovering new things in this game. When we when we find the new skips, I like there are moments where we all kind of get in on it. Like, oh my goodness, how is this possible? I can't believe this. And everyone is losing their minds all at once. Love it. Exactly. This game is an adrenaline rush, except for River. <laughs> except for River. <laughs> River is the time you get to chill because it's so intense at the first, you know, <laughs> five, ten minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a pretty big downtime piece. section, and it's, thankfully, it's really this is really the only world like this. Even, it's funny because even uh, Pacha in the game remarks this scene was much shorter in the film. Right, right. Oh he God. says that to uh, the girl, Chaka. Yeah. <laughs> this game has a lot of meta humor, and I love it. For unfortunately, we don't get to hear much of it because we just blaze through all the dialogue. Yeah, but Orion and I know this game so well, the dialogue still just plays in our heads anyway. <laughs> now, did the two of you become friends because of this game? Yes. Pretty much. I, Orion, I met you on the Discord, didn't I? The Groove Discord? Yeah, yeah, that's how, when I, when I started speedrunning this game, that's how I met you, because 
I don't think you were going by uh, Dank at the time. You were going by like quite a few names, so it was hard to like remember. Right. Oh, hey, it's this guy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm uh, I'm not much of a speedrunner for this game. I'm like in the top twenty at the moment, but I've been a I've been a casual fan of the game since uh, since I was a kid, and I've 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 studied a lot about the the beta versions for this game. I've studied all of the different language dubs that were done for this game, and all all that all that stuff I have on uh, on one of my YouTubes. One oh of my yeah, YouTube be channels. sure to if you want to get some like behind the scenes content in this game, definitely check out Dank's YouTube channel. What's the name of it? The Dank's New Groove. That's Amazing. the one all about this. The one all about this game. It's the Dank's New Groove. Perfect. So if we have any uh, questions or donations you want to highlight, now is a perfect time to do it. Well, donations for SGDQ have closed, but we do we did raise over 2.2 million dollars for SGDQ. So thank you all. Incredible. Sorry for Doctors Without Borders. We did so. Thank you all so much for donating during. Uh, SGDQ, but actually, uh, Hotfix is uh, sponsored by uh, the viewers. So, a uh, huge shout out to all of our supporters, your subs, Prime Gaming subs, Gift subs, and Bits cheered here on the GDQ Twitch channel for support. Games done quick, Hotfix. So, please consider subscribing if you do enjoy our daily Hotfix shows. All right. Woohoo. We have a pretty nice, pretty standard. Uh... We're, we're spinning grape seeds at these crocodiles, by the way, in case I haven't, wasn't clear, clear on that yet. This part terrified me as a child. I'm just, putting, I'm just putting that out there. This game has a lot of nightmare feel. I think a lot of old PS1 games tend to do that with just the low poly look. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's something about the graphics, the uncanniness. I know exactly what you mean. Meh. Yeah. Two out of four you were, river levels down. You were low on health. I was almost worried. I I have like <laughs> two wampies, I think. Oh okay, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. No, it's two. Oh look who it is! Our favorite bike kid, brat. Except he's now here he's again. Have to race him. Yeah. His little floaty llama. Gosh, he's fast. He is. This is oh, little... but we intend to be faster. <laughs> Yeah, you can actually like get some nice bounces on them if you like cat like get ahead of them. I get this one here. Doink. Look at these two spin. They're probably like very dizzy at this point. Yeah, as Pacha sometimes says, I feel sick. Oh yeah, when you when you're in like the whirlpools for too long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this level, uh there's not much speed run strat per se going for it you just got to make sure just be in front of the kid and you'll be fine I, I was actually going to ask a little bit about the beginning of the run it all happened so fast now i saw that you were kind of rolling in certain sections is that like the fastest type of movement when you don't have to jump somewhere yes so like okay. it, so like jumping's faster than walking rolling's faster than walking and yeah so if you don't have charge you want to be just rolling around everywhere Ugh. Right, so when you have charge potions available, then it all becomes about uh, maintaining your charge meter, making sure you're, like, charge jumping and not wasting the charge bar too and much. sometimes I'm the game gives them out, like, candy, and other times you really only get, like, one for, like, a long stretch, so you, the game really rewards all your good charge jumps. Oh, yeah. So you have to kind of conserve a little bit throughout yes. the route. Yes. Totally. Right on. Yeah, especially in Jungle Knight 2 and a few other levels. Now, have y'all ever tried to glitch out of this river ever? Like, is that Oh, a we wish. We wish. There, we haven't exactly found a good river skip yet for various reasons. Fair, it's, just, it's, so, it's so different compared to the rest of the game, you know? It, it, yeah, it really is. All right. Thankfully, we're almost done with river, but... Unfortunately, it likes to go out with a bang with one of the worst bosses in video game history. Here comes Yzma the villain throwing some balloons at us. This is a very RNG segment, and sometimes the balloons can just disappear. We don't know why. <laughs> 
one of the worst bosses ever. I don't know. That feels a little harsh. You don't like the piggy? I mean, like, Yzma for says, go, piggy, oh, go. Oh, yeah, that's true. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes Yzma will, like, give certain lines if you... on certain animals. Not really happening this time. How many more? Like, two more hits with the wall? Don't move. Maybe? Ah, uh, don't wait for him to walk. <laughs> that was a pretty bad river. There form. it is. Gee, thanks, Yzma. You really done did it. Anyone got a glass of water? Anyone got a glass of water? Remember to stay hydrated. <laughs> he yes, said the thing. Stay hydrated, chat. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, river is almost done. Back to the real game. And what a level to throw you in. Um, excuse me. So, we have Jungle oh. Day 1. Uh, Dan can explain this for me. Yeah, Ori Orion's about to do some more up-warping. And once... Yeah, here we go. He's gonna up-warp up to that place close to the river. And then he's gonna kind of traverse further along the river from above. And once he's... uh. Once he's reached the other side, kind of where you see the river kind of is coming from, it's going to require a long jump, which will take him to a place there we go. At, at the end of the level. The devs intended this, this whole labyrinth, to be at the very end of the level, but here we are already. That was very slow, but I got it. But we got it, yeah. And of course, now he's Cusco is up along the sides. We don't even have to run through the labyrinth itself as the devs intended another up warp and yeah we we're just bypassing all the guards all the traps all the doors none of our none of our concern all righty that is a that is a very tricky level i have lost many a run there it looked like a breeze for you just now <laughs> yeah yeah orion makes it look easy jungle day chapter two like i mentioned in jungle night chapter two this was gonna require uh, maneuvering, you know, just, it's one of the semi-longer ones, I would say. We have to watch out for these plants that make the pog face. The pog, it, yeah, it's the, uh, it's the pog emote on our, on our Discord server. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, not too much to this level, it's just really about movement. Out of my way! Um, excuse me. So then let me ask you this, Orion. Do you have any speedrun plans, you know, maybe in addition to the Emperor's New Groove? Uh, that after? is a that is a good question. Probably after this run. Uh, the Groove run is at a, actually a pretty good state. The world record is a 46.55, I believe. And it was a really, really good run considering how much more difficult this game is compared to when I first started running in 2021. So I'm really happy with it. As for other games, um, probably the plan is to maybe go back to Battle for Bikini Bottom, try and improve some of my times there, or maybe pick up another speed game. I know, it's like, sky's Checkpoint. the limit, the possibilities are endless, way. there's so many games out there to speedrun. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's, it's sometimes hard to choose, but anytime that any new developments get found in this game, I always come back to it, because I never get tired of playing it. Oh Jungle boy. Day Three. We now get a we get to see an animal transformation. Guess a what? A certain is? animal. Yeah, we won't spoil it just in case there are people who don't know what's about to happen. But it's it's funny. It'll be interesting. <laughs> All right, and time's up, and the answer is I'm a frog. whoa, ribbit. Um, Hello, Kermit. I'm not supposed to do that. So, the gimmick behind the frog is that you go further each time you chain jumps together. And you can carry the max jump through doors. So you can just hop through these with breeze rhyme. Yeah, it's, it's pretty generous now that I think about it. Once you're on your third jump as the frog, you can just keep doing the third jump over and over. Very, very, very far. Door entry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, smooth, smooth. There's our idol. We. This game just has a lot of subtle movement things that are just checkpoint. They're just really flashy to pull off. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I know what Orion's thinking. This, I, 
I'm gonna say it, I don't even care. This is the lock screen pattern on my phone. <laughs> I'm not even joking. They <laughs> pointed that out to me during our practice run, and I, I just died laughing, because I was totally caught off guard by it. But it's so perfect, it's a 3x3 three three grid, it's so perfect. Spit at this, uh, <laughs> sign here for another red idol, and that leaves us out of Jungle Day 3. We looked up at the big boy. He looked up at the big boy. Alright. Um, that's just skipped a cutscene. Uh, that's trickier than it looks. I've screwed that up. Yes, it is. Times. What Orion just did, jumping jumping over to the bridge, I I haven't even pulled that off yet, because it's hard to it's hard to skip the the dialogue that Pacha says right at the start of this level. So this but is Orion did it. This is the mountain, it has a lot of uh convoluted levels and um Supposed to place these statues if I can place it. This might take me a while. Oh, yeah. This is very technically, tricky. Yeah, technically, the easy way to do this skip is with two statues, but there is a way to hey. do it just with this one. Out of my way. Another up Hallelujah. Here. This one's more one of the more tricky up warps. There we go. Not all up warps are created equal, some are really oh, easy and some are really difficult. Can confirm. <laughs> Thank you, Boulder, for not uh, for not stopping us, letting us clip through you. And Mountain Two. Llama coming through. This one's kind of a. It's amazing how much has developed in just this one level alone. This level you looks so different. We have the exact oh, yeah. same up warp as in Mountain One, but it's somehow harder for some reason. Hey. Checkpoint. Yeah, thanks to these upwarps, now we're kind of doing this portion of the level kind of in reverse direction, Just as the point. devs intended. Like, need to get on this kind of disorienting if you're not used to it. Getting on top of that, and yeah, to cross that gap. And now this is one of my favorite skips. It was immediately iconic. The iconic. Don't blink. Condor skip. What are walls? Oh, that was so smooth. Good job. That was so smooth. Very nice. Yeah, huge shout out to Jordan. What was his last name? Oh, yeah. Ryan. Jordan Scott Miller. We thought Checkpoint. that trick was originally found like by a runner in like 2015 or so, but apparently looking up some old uh, game forums, uh, some guy Checkpoint. named Jordan found it in like 2002. And I'm like, how? 2002. He is... made a post on this forum about what we call now the Condor Man skip. Yeah, because you skip the Condor Man who dresses up as a Condor and goes tweet tweet. This game has some Coming weird through. characters. Yeah, what were the uh, what were the writers thinking for half of this game? Exactly. Let alone the movie. <laughs> the return of Kronk with with some ice physics. We have to collect more green idols than him. They spawn in the same place, so we could just stand here and collect one really nicely. Is he ice skating on sandals? That's impressive. I oh yeah, that's guess? a good point. Ice, ice. He's on the ice. He's on the ice. Kronk's on the ice. Well, uh, that's it for mountain. Now, in the next section, the speed running is going to get really interesting. Excuse me. Oops. There we go. That's, yes, so... Uh, that's a relatively easy up work, but... Alright, so, so... We're almost done with the level. We need to get past yeah, this door by doing some epic lock picking, for lack of a better term. And with that, we have skipped one of the normally longest levels in the game, casually. And speaking of long but, levels, here comes the longest level in the speed oh, run. City my two. beloved City 2. Yeah, it is time. This is where runs come to die. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> oh yeah, City 2 is one of the great equalizers. Not the great equalizer, but it is one of them. Oh yes. Oh, nice. That cycle oh, yeah. is very yeah. tricky. So I'm really happy to show that off. Death Warp EA. One, one down. Coming up to the right path, we're gonna place these two pots, do a nice little up warp, and then fall down. Okay, um... What a skill issue. Alright. Hey, it's... It, 
it's a weird camera angle, honestly. So. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes I overshoot those those pots when I do the up warps. It it happens. This level has a lot of cycles, so it's very easy to like lose time mm. over like what seems like nothing. Oh yeah, this room. Oh, yeah. oh boy. You got enough axes? Uh, swinging uh, axes? You can All shoot right. through these blocks here a little bit. A Ow. Ouchie. I'm gonna pick I, this up what? here because I'm kind of. How did I not know that? You could shoot grapes through the, yeah. through the box. What? Okay, interesting. <laughs> oh, we're learning new, uh, new stuff here today. Apparently so. And the level's not done, by the way. Just, just, just want to throw that out there. Coming up is one that oh, yeah. another big way. favorite of mine. We have this guard the here. We're gonna lure him over into position. Ow. He's gonna give us a nice little push into the door. Checkpoint. That trick Ooh, is so yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I did that successfully once, I think. Orion yeah, makes all this look way. easy, but that's what he's here for. <laughs> actually, for that trick, the execution is not what I worry about. It's the fact that my health is actually pretty low, so I... And there are a lot of guards here, so... Oh, yeah, so now Orion's main priority is just making sure that a guard doesn't, like, sneak up on him around the corner and poke him or something? Right. Yeah, which is... Very easy to happen because there's a lot of blind corners here. Picking, Oop. picking up. They some are out coins. for blood. By the way, if, um, if you haven't noticed, anytime you pick up a gold coin or five regular coins, you increase your charge bar. So sometimes it comes in handy. That's basic llama biology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this game has so many funny lines. All right. And with that, we're okay. done with City 2. Just kidding. Yay. Wait, psych. Hmm. Oh, wait, there's more. Oh, oh there's there more. is indeed. <laughs> nice little jump to cut, cut, a, cut a straight little line. I don't know what the point of this room is. There's nothing in here. It's empty. It's, it makes you think. It makes you wonder <laughs> about your journey room. so far. <laughs> yes. Life nice tricky through. little jump there to... Cut, cut, cut across the block. And with that, we're, and we more are blocks. finally almost done with City 2. We Let's need to... Uh, my beloved block. Golden Head. The golden He's here. Head. We're, we're supposed to get a body to complete the statue, but we don't need that. We're going to do some more lock picking here. Let's have a look. By see. placing him in a very specific spot and rolling a specific way, we bypass the door. It's it's a miracle of science. It, it, it boggles the mind, a tad. How is even possible? Three, to do some unorthodox movement to get up here. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Of course, watch watch out for the crocodiles as well. I should well, probably of course. start doing that runs. I had to Let's learn that because I wanted to show it off, off in the event. I should, probably should just do it for runs. I was opting out of it for a while. The like putting the pot first and then yeah. jumping on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not even that hard. It's just kind of risky. So it was like I'm scared, but I'm not scared anymore. Skipping the dialogue. Yep. Whee! I'm Gotta watch out for the guard here. Jumping. Do these guards not have peripheral Check vision? I guess or not. do they never just look slightly above? I don't know. Now let me ask you this. How closely does the Let's game follow like the lore of the movie? So w what's our objective here? Um, It actually follows it pretty well. This is like pretty close to the plot of the movie. Like you start off in the village as the llama yeah. and then you travel through the jungle, the river. It actually follows it yeah. pretty decently well. Despite yeah, what, to add what this... Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. to mention. That was a little void jump there. You probably wondered what I was waiting for. <laughs> yeah, there. Uh, we'll, we'll see again later after Orion gets the charge potion. That there's going to be another jump. There's going to be another jump into the void. Fun fact about that void jump. That was found by accident. I was just messing around and with the crocodile in that room. I was like, oh no, it's going to eat me. And I jumped off as a joke. <laughs> and I saw that <laughs> area just there. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> what have I done? What have I found? Forbidden knowledge. <laughs> Which is Here comes another void. 
Yeah. We? Yep. Such a great find, too, because this level was probably one of my least favorites before those two void jumps were found. This, this is this one of the more still. stressful ones, I would say, with all the guards. It's oh, yeah. stressful, you know? Oh, yeah, thank you, Pot, for just making the guard nice. turn about face. Checkpoint. You can, like... Barely cut that in oh, time yeah. before they see you. Now we're coming up to one of the very oh. tense moments. I'm gonna try a very difficult cutscene skip. I really hope I the, get this. the throne skip. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sitting. Let's go. Oh boy. I'm, I'm nice. very happy. Yeah. I am very happy about that because yeah. if you mess that up, you soft lock and you have to redo the entire level. That was kind of a gamble, but it was worth it. Is it just oh, yes. really precise, uh, like, platforming? Yeah, it's it's pretty much just very tricky, especially because the... You can't be grounded when you enter that. So you have to, like, yeah. enter oh. it backwards in the air. It's a very weird skip. Right, so as I understand it, Orion had to first wait for Yzma to throw the potion. And then he rolled into the door, and then he had to turn around and karate jump kick backwards. Yeah, and you have to do all that precisely. It's not too hard for me anymore, but it, I I was a little nervous doing it for this one. I, I said to myself, eh, I got enough time. You got this, you're a pro. Now we're up to the uh, roller coaster levels. This one's pretty standard, just some nice little, nice little riding along in Six Flags. Right. Thankfully the whole about, world isn't like that. What about you, <laughs> chat? Have you been on a roller coaster before? Dank, uh, Orion, what about you? Uh, that's you know, if, uh, Dank, you go first. I was gonna say, if Disney were smart, they would turn these <laughs> Emperor's New Groove catacombs into a roller coaster at Disneyland, if they were smart. Patent it. Patent it. Pat patent it. Trademark it. <laughs> All right. As for me, I, I actually had a fear of roller coasters for a while until I went to Six Flags and it was pretty wild. I'm, I'm proud of you for conquering your fear, Orion. Good job. <laughs> Ow, out of my Indeed. Way. All right. Just a lot of tricky platforming in this level. It's, this is around the point where if I'm on a really good run, I start to get nervous because... Booyah. Oh, yeah. Also, I will mention that the bike kid is in this level, but fortunately, he's not required to... Uh, <laughs> To, to reach the end if you if you know what you're doing. He's not even required in the hundred percent run. Not even like casually. I don't know why they put him in. It's almost like a troll. Wait, wait. wait th there are no coins where nope. the bike kid is. Nope. Whoa. Okay. 100%. That's that's really silly. That. Uh, speaking of silly, I just. <laughs> that, was, that was a bit of a silly. Yeah, that's better. Oh. Uh, that's okay. We'll get. No back. matter. It's just the. The skulls freaked you out a little bit. That's fine. That's what they're there for. Gives me time to get my booyahs in. Booyah! <laughs> True. <laughs> Lama coming right. through. So let's uh, let's try that again and not fall. All right, Booyah. that's more like yeah. it. Trusty death warp. All right, we're almost done with cat two. We're coming up where. We're... On another RNG boss fight, we have these little block children, I guess, and they think we smell, so we have to punt them off the level. Of course, we have to show who's dominant. Of course, but it's Daddy gets upset, so we want to. We want the black bombs. We don't want any red bombs. Uh, black, right. I got perfect RNG, oh. but I ricocheted one uh, of them by accident. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, uh, the RNG was generous and only gave me one red bomb. I've had like double Checkpoint. digit red bombs. Yeah. It's it's a time. Out of my way. Checkpoint. Uh, yeah, so after this fight, there isn't much Whoops. RNG to worry about anymore, Climb right? The corners, yes. Automatically turn us yeah. All right, coming up to another roller coaster. This is probably the trickiest one, so I may get quiet. Uh, these green pads here reverse your controls. I'm sure that's probably thrown a few kids off when they first played <laughs> myself, this. Myself included, yeah. So, uh, as far as speed running goes, these roller coaster sections, the only noteworthy thing, I guess, are the charge boosters. If you, uh... 
Maybe an Orion can explain it better, but basically, it, you basically yes, just want exactly. to be as airborne as possible. It, 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 either like go on the yellow arrows, or if you can't, just be as airborne as much as you can to conserve your right. speed. You know, I think the blue corners will automatically turn us around. Oh yeah, <laughs> they might turn us around. I love this game's soundtrack. Oh yeah, shout out to uh, the composer. Justin Scarnova, I'm pretty sure. Not sure what he's doing nowadays, but we thank you for your service for this 23-year-old game. Maximum overdrive! Maximum overdrive! Oh, <laughs> uh, we are right, we, we are go. Sonic the Hedgehog up in here! An adrenaline rush. Oh yeah. This would be Wordy climax. This would be another transformation level if we didn't have a nice little skip for it. We're gonna come up to here. Position well, this one's iconic. Ever so slightly, and just yeah. trust in our or not. I don't even. I'm not even sure what went wrong there. That looked fine. It looked fine to me too. Well, it's fine. So, yeah, this skip. Uh, Orion discovered it. It was December of 2021, and doing this skip correctly, you get to skip the whole bunny transformation, and you get to skip the freaky ghost, which oh, yeah, terrified that... me as a child! Yeah, those block <laughs> children you punted off earlier, corners, it turns out one of them's a ghost and they come back around. for revenge. Oh, did you know that if you line up with the corners, they'll automatically turn you around? <gasps> no way! That's... That's incredible! Who would have guessed? Thankfully, this one's not as treacherous as... Catacombs 3. We... There's one part in this level I uh, I get stressed at. It's where... I'll point it out when I see it, but there's some... It's fast, and there are some sharp turns with the blue corners. Yes, yes, Pacha. Raise your arms. Scream if you want to go faster. <laughs> If only we could just go to the end right there. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. But oh, yeah. them, the, the coaster levels are very hard-coded to make sure you don't skip oh, every yeah. single turn. That part I just saw Ryan do, I it gets me stressed with the with the jump pad <laughs> and how fast you were going. Yeah, but it's okay. Oh, this is the home stretch. All right. Woo! Look, no hands. Five Wompy, we're good to go. We are so good to go. And the home stretch, the last yeah. world of the game, lab yes. five. I just Let, lab, not, which has five. This levels. is, this is the beginning of the end, ladies and gentlemen. Alrighty, very simple puzzles. Uh, coming up is a cutscene we can avoid. If you remember from Village Three, entering look mode into a door, it actually puts us backwards and dodges the cutscene trigger. Yeah, I, I'm actually, I'm actually seeing you do that trick correctly now. Uh, oh yeah! Wow. <laughs> yeah, no cuts, no trap doors. Yeah, that was that was efficient. And he's a die, Cusco. Oh yeah, and all the guards are turned into animals too. That's also <laughs> that also happens in the movie. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna quickly use the bunny yeah. to grab two idols. Thank you for your service. All right, pretty bunny. standard level. This next level is one of my favorites. A lot's gonna go by here, so we need to oh, overlap yeah. Yeah. these two cutscenes, so that way we can turn into the turtle. So we we're trying to slide away from Kronk here. Because otherwise, because turtles aren't allowed down here, so we need to just run away. And we're just going to get away from him in a completely normal fashion. Completely natural for a turtle to fly into the void. Yeah. It's pretty And pretty then that, the end's right over there. This is how the devs intended it, right? Yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> now we get the frog turn. I think this is the last animal that we get to see. Correct, yeah. What a finale! Looking frog. <laughs> Ribbit. Yeah. I wonder how uh, how well he eats his food, among other things. All right. 
This is uh, one of the levels, not too much to say here. Certainly one of the levels of all time. I have a lot to say about the next level coming up. Lab, Lab 4. 4? Goodness gracious, yes you do. Yes you do. <laughs> this is currently my biggest run killer at the time of this game's current meta. It's just very... There's all... The two tricks in this run are doozies. One is you're talking about the Yzma thing? Yes. We'll we'll get to them as time is. Sure, sure. <laughs> this game has a very this level has a very interesting 2D aspect that we didn't really see in any other levels. Kinda interesting. Yeah, side scrolling. It's nice. Change of pace, you know, that's you know, this game honestly this game has a nice selection of pace changes between the river and then the roller coaster and then now we have the side scrolling and all the animal stuff. You don't I mean, I don't feel bored. I don't feel bored when I play this game. They wanted to jam-pack it all in there to give everyone yep. a full experience. Booyah. For sure. Booyah. Gotta get our booyahs Booyah. in. <laughs> Mandatory booyahs. Mandatory. Absolutely. You must absolutely do them or your run is invalid. <laughs> no, you're worse. Your run is cursed. Alright, here we go. Checkpoint. This is the hardest trick of the game. Dan can back me up on this. Yes, I can. So, what Orion is going to do, he's going to attempt a very precise jump off to the, basically, that corner you see over there. And if it's done correctly, he will yeet himself over to Yzma, which, I think he's going to try it again, over to Yzma, which normally takes a long time. If you play this level the way the devs intended, you're going through all the rooms, getting all the idols, whatever, but... I hope it happens. Because cause Lord knows the skip is worth it. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. There we go. That is Hallelujah. a very now, tough trick. Show her who's boss. That, that has killed so many 46-paced runs. <laughs> and the oh, trick after and, uh, it also did. Yeah. But on the flip side, to quote what Orion once said, I just killed the game! Oh, yeah, fun fact about the strat that I just did. When it was found, I opted out of it for, like, a long time because I was afraid to do it. Then I had a... This was back when I was grinding for a 48. So I thought to myself... I, I keep forgetting. I was supposed to do an elevator manip strat, but I keep forgetting it. Uh, but... Anyway, I was grinding for 48 at the time, and I was on a bad run, so I said, Hey, why don't I just... I'm gonna attempt the skip for giggles. And I ended up getting it first try, so I was first like, try. I killed the game, <laughs> oh no. So now I have to do it every run. And speaking of hard <laughs> tricks, we have to immediately follow it up with this trick that's very easy to choke. The owl skip, yeah. So if Orion does this right, it's just up warping, and then he's gonna charge up himself right over to where the red idol is, where, again, normally, the devs intended you to go through a whole sec selection of rooms and whatever just right. to get up there. But, yeah, it's, uh... Easy peasy and lemon oh. squeezy. Exactly. Alright. I almost reached for F4. That would have been really bad. <laughs> At the wrong door? Oh my goodness. All right, and now the home stretch, <laughs> lab five. It all comes down to this. I did oh a, boy. I buffered a roll as the level loaded so that way I could cut this cycle much easier. Other than that, we have one more, one more visit from our special friend. Our we... special, oh, our special brat, <laughs> the bike kid. Hmm. Yes, yes. Are you gonna do the thing where you have to switch from controller to keyboard just for the bike kid? Well, it's oh, fast, boy. so... Yeah, yeah so... Yeah. Once I get there, I'll show you what I mean, so... Sure, sure. Uh, I was supposed to jump into the pit, which would have teleported me back to here, but I didn't quite get it. So, a weird thing about this game is if you hey, if you switch point. the keyboard here, the bike kid moves extremely that. slow, so you can just catch up to him really quickly. Not yeah. sure why the devs did that. Yeah, it's bizarre, definitely. I'll miss right. you, Cusco, later! 
I will not miss the Pratt. So I will not miss him. <laughs> we we just have some standard platforming until we get Checkpoint. to the end. So I want to want to give a shout Third. out to uh, GDQ and Smooth Operative for hosting this wonderful Attack. game. I want to give a shout out to my my guest commentator, Mr. The Dank. Go check Thank out you his very channel, much. That, uh, The Thank Dank's you very new much. Groove. I want to give a shout out to the Groove Speedrunning Discord and all its members, including... If I forget your name, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I just messed that up. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Jamie Joe and S Skywards, the first person whose world record inspired me to run this game. A shout out to Honest Hit, the pioneer of this game speed run. He was one. He was pretty much. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Uh, shouts to uh, Spike Stuff, Absol, Zabang, uh, Chocolate Penguin. Yes, Chocolate Penguin. Oh God! <laughs> Don't forget the second place. <laughs> Out of my way. And again, if I forgot your name, I'm very sorry, but yeah. but just know I I am very thankful for having you as a part of part of this great games community. Counts. Truly an underrated gem of a game. We're not biased at all when we say this, but <laughs> we're saying it. It's underrated. <laughs> One final race to the end as Yzma transforms into a hideous kitten. Meow. Checkpoint. Pretty much the just a straight shot across these jumps. Yes, for whatever reason, the devs made the final part of the final level pretty straightforward. Oddly enough. As I discovered in the beta versions for this game, this section used to be a lot more complicated. It required jumps and obstacles. All right, get ready on race time. Isma. Time ends when I touch the potion. And it is gonna happen. Uh, time. Got Woo! Stuck there. GG. Well, All right. Wow, nicely done, oh, so, Ryan. I actually thought you were gonna oh, like baby. break through your PB for a second. You were really oh, going for oh, it. Oh, <laughs> I was. I'm nowhere close. Uh, final time was a 49.08. Looks like it. That's that's pretty good. Very oh, respectable. Yes. Yeah. Very nicely done. Um, I, I have to say too, mm. chat. If you enjoyed the run, make sure you follow the runner and the commentator, and I will post yeah, both of those links for day. Orion and Mr. The Dink in chat. Um, Merci Orion, beaucoup. do you want to say anything else to our viewers before we um, head over to the next game? Thank you so much for running that. That was incredible. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for happening. All I have to say uh, <laughs> at this point is just booyah. Booyah. I was, I was going to say boom baby, but oh. same concept. <laughs> all right. Booyah, chat. Before we break, I do want to give another big shout out to all of the supporters for GDQ. Your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support Games Done Quick Hotfix, including this show. So if you had fun with us so far, please consider subscribing. And if you'd like to show off your own run here on uh, Time Capsule, you can use the command exclamation mark Time Capsule in the Twitch chat for more information on how to submit your run. We will be right back with Kirby64, the Crystal Shards. So stay tuned. Woo! All right, everybody, welcome back to the GDQ Hotfix. I'm your host, Smooth Operative, and you are watching Time Capsule. We are all set to go for Kirby 64, the Crystal Shard. So please welcome our runner, Curtis. Hi, Curtis. Absolutely. Oh, no, I'm having fun. I hope you are, Curtis. Please introduce yourself. Oh, wow.
right, everybody. Again, welcome back to Time Capsule. We are set up for Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards. Um, please welcome our runner, Curtis. Curtis, hello. Hello, everybody. Sorry about that. Had my mic muted All before. Good. No worries. Uh, <laughs> my name is Curtis. Uh, I've been running this game, Kirby 64, for about uh, five years now, I think. June 2018. I think uh, that summer was about when I started running it on uh, pretty much the worst version possible Japanese N64 cart on an LCD TV with input lag. So it was rough beginnings, but uh, now, you know, made some great leaps and bounds, and now we're playing on the fastest version, uh, the Switch Virtual Console on the Nintendo Switch Online service, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And uh, I'm going to actually set up something called the uh, full game RNG Manip real quick, so i got to reset the game here, and I can explain that. Uh, sort of as I'm going through it. But uh, time will start uh, very shortly. So right here, in order to set up the manip, we got to mash through these screens as fast as possible. And then you got to go into the minigame screen, and you have to check the characters in the second, third, and fourth positions. So we got Kirby Kirby Waddle Dee. So basically right now, we're one RNG value behind the one we're supposed to be. So all we have to do to get to the correct value is enter boss battles here, and then we just exit, and we are good to start the run, so uh, I can give a countdown real quick, Absolutely. if you're all ready. Yeah, we're totally ready. All right, uh, three, two, one, go. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so as I mentioned there, I sort of briefly just went over it, but I'm going to attempt... Uh, at least for some levels to do this RNG manip. I don't expect it to go anywhere near the whole run because it's pretty difficult to carry throughout the whole game. Uh, but basically, you know, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a full game RNG manipulation. So things like all of the boss fights and uh, mini boss fights and things like Rick in uh, level 3-2, I believe. All of that is manipulated so that we get the fastest outcomes possible. Uh, and basically, different factors that affect it are, you know, sort of the way you move as Kirby, sort of the things in the environments, like those dandelions right there that we just passed, actually then spawning on to the game, advanced RNG, so just a whole bunch of random things throughout the whole run. Uh, our movements, things in the background, enemies, and uh, I'm sort of out of practice with it, because before doing this event, I haven't really run this game in about a year or so. It's still a tiny bit rough, a little bit more de-rusting probably to do some relearning of the manip. But uh, currently my PB is... oh, we already <laughs> we already <laughs> don't have the manip. Good stuff. Well, we appreciate you, you know, well, de-rusting for, yeah. <laughs> for the show. I, I do appreciate yeah. that. I'll, I'll still uh, sort of explain things here and there whenever they show up, but it, that, that seems to be a curse of mine. Like, I joined the uh, Kirby series relay, I think, two years ago and tried it. Exact same thing happened, level one, I was already done with the manip, but I practiced doing it manipless, so it shouldn't be too big of a problem. Nice. But uh, yeah, so as I mentioned sort of at the beginning, whoops, I'm playing on the Switch Virtual Console version. Uh, so I actually recently found out, like I did some timings with my Wii Virtual Console personal best and the casual playthrough on the Switch, and the Switch actually seems to save about 22 and a half seconds in just load times over the Wii Virtual Console, which Wii Virtual Console in itself saves about a minute 15 or so over the Nintendo 64. So collectively, uh, you could say the Switch is about, you know, close to a minute 40 faster than the uh, Nintendo 64. That, that's like, I can it adds up, oh, you know. <laughs> What's that? Sorry. I said that adds up, so I think you're probably oh, playing yeah, on the better uh, console here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, uh, I remember, because I had mentioned I started on the N64, as soon as I switched to Wii Virtual Console, I was saving time like crazy, like golding. Pretty much every single level, it was kind of funny. That must that have been happened. like night and day difference. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. And also, uh, like, going from N64 on an LCD TV, because those don't play well with composite inputs at all. Like, there's a lot of input delay with them. So, going from that to a console that actually works on, like, an LCD TV was 
like input wise was night and day as well. But, uh, also, I should uh, on that topic I should mention so the Switch Virtual Console, even though it's the fastest, uh, it actually does have a tiny bit of input lag and even a little bit of audio delay, which at first can feel very tricky to play with. But honestly, like after the week and a half or so I've been playing this game again, I I would say I've gotten pretty used to it, so I don't think it's honestly the worst thing in the world to play with. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, just for everyone's information, I should go through sort of the uh, the differences with all the versions. So up until the Switch, it's not super accurate, sort of a lot of the time differences, but basically the slowest version of the game you can play on are the first two revisions of the Japanese cartridge. Uh, basically, they have the same load times as normal N64, but they also have invincibility frames for the DDD fight in this level, actually, at the end. Uh, so the, in the invincibility frames are a little bit longer, which adds probably, like, I don't know, three seconds, four, maybe six seconds. I don't remember the exact estimate, but uh, something like that. And then the next fastest version is every other version of the N64 cart. And then after that, you got the Wii U Virtual Console, which somehow has longer loading times than Wii Virtual Console, and it's also got input delay as well. I don't really know how emulation got worse from console to console, but it did. <laughs> uh, and then after that, you got uh, Wii Virtual Console, and then Kirby's Dream Collection on either the Wii or the Wii U. They all have uh, pretty much the same load times. And then after that, you got the Switch, which is what we are playing on tonight. Now, forgive me if you answered this question already, Curtis, but someone in the chat had wondered, are you playing this on the Joy-Con controllers, the Pro Controller, N64? What you got going on? Yeah, so I can actually uh, show the controller after this level, but it's kind of a funny setup I got. So I'm playing with a Wii Classic controller connected to a Wii Classic to GameCube adapter connected to... A Wii U Smash 4 GameCube adapter that plugs into the Switch through USB. So pretty much covering all like the previous five consoles that Nintendo released. Yeah, that's quite this the controller setup. setup here. <laughs> that's quite the setup, Curtis. Yeah, it's pretty pretty wild. <laughs> I would look into doing something else, but I'm just so comfortable with this controller that I don't know. I don't know if it'd be worth switching at this point. I mean, if you know it and that's what you're used to, then yeah, keep doing what you do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, here, whoops, it's buffered input right there. So here, the wispy fight, uh, unfortunately it's not manip, so it's kind of slow, but with this second phase, he can do like puff and then throw the apples and then do another puff. And every time he puffs, you lose a little bit of time. It's like probably half a second or something. But uh, that definitely adds up. And Manip sort of takes all of that out. And uh, you get a super fast fight there, usually. As part of me wishes I hadn't lost the Manip already. But it should be easy to carry at least through like the end of World 2. But uh, I don't know. Maybe someday I'll do an event and be able to carry it past level 1. <laughs> Now, Curtis, do you think that you'll keep working on this uh, speedrun, d uh, after uh, the show tonight? Yeah, so I think uh, this show was actually a really good opportunity because it wasn't long after I did that timing comparison that uh, you reached out to me to do the show. Oh, nice. So I think, you know, going from this show into sort of a grind for the next minute barrier, a 105, is something that I'm really looking forward to doing coming up. And, and you'll be broadcasting this on your Twitch channel, I assume? Yes, that's correct. Okay, cool, yeah. I'm going to post the link for you in chat so that if all of you watching are having fun, you can follow Curtis here on Twitch. Awesome, I appreciate it. And in this room, we got our good pal uh, Sandros, a.k.a. Sandros, for those that Sandra. watch my stream. <laughs> <laughs> Just bit. something... Some weird thing I do every time we get here, but if you look at the faces on the wall, they kind of, like, in my early days of running this game, they reminded me of 
can draw us from the Super Nintendo version of Star Fox. And since they're in a sandy level, I mean, why not? <laughs> That's Call pretty good. <laughs> See, that, that meme's been around pretty much as long as I've been uh, running this game. Oh, the primordial memes. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those memes that just stuck around. Well, we're no stranger to memes, are we, chefs? <laughs> yeah. They're all over the place, especially with this game. Also, just wanted to <laughs> comment on my hat right here. I actually got this from a friend not too long ago. I guess he got it from like a thrift store or something, but I had yet to find a good time to wear it. I never actually wore it on stream, but I decided, you know, why not right now? Oh yeah, so <laughs> did you, you said you got this from a friend? Yeah, I believe uh, they picked it up from like a thrift store something. I, I don't know. I just came home one day and it was on my desk, so... That's absolutely <laughs> <Happily> fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Pretty awesome gift. Yeah, here I think... Uh, I'm sort of slacking with the game commentary, but we had to actually get a combo with that Sparky. I, I almost missed it. I kind of risked it there, which would have been bad, so I would have had to redo the whole level. But uh, you have to combine the rock power with that Sparky and then backtrack to get that shard and a funny thing about that shard is that it actually the shard does not spawn until you break that barrier where it is and uh, because normally if you have like the double stone power up your hitbox would actually expand and be able to reach it but the crystals not even spawned in so it's impossible to grab until you break that wall unfortunately so we gotta do some backtracking and then here, I know people are gonna, you know, rag on me, but at the beginning of this level, you can actually skip that first pillar that falls. But it's a super inconsistent trick, and if you go for it, you're more than likely to just get crushed. So I didn't even bother. <laughs> no, for something like this... Oh, I'm sorry, Curtis. Oh, no, I'm, I was just gonna say, if I already lost Manip, I don't want to make it any worse. <laughs> oh, right. I was gonna ask, though, for something like a strat that's so, like, you know... Is it viable it, only in, like, um, the in-game level, I guess, level bests? You know what I mean? Chat, help me out here. <laughs> uh, like a individual level speedrun type thing? Yeah, yeah, like for individual levels. Um, I would say so. I mean, I've, I've never uh, done any individual level speedruns, really. That's uh, something that's not on the leaderboard. Oh, okay. I mean, could be under consideration, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes I try it just for fun, but that trick right there is one that, like, you know, it would save a very insignificant amount of time, and it would just be such a huge risk to, like, kill the run on the spot, so... Oh, that's fair, <laughs> Usually yeah. not something I go for. <laughs> but it's always funny to just sort of mess with the chat and be like, Alright, guys, pillar skip today. <laughs> Yeah, so here, before we leave the level, uh, in the old route that Hundo used to do, uh, we used to use the drill for the next level, but we actually, not recently, it's probably like three years ago, to be honest, maybe even longer, but we switched over to grabbing that ice enemy, and then we come back and combine with a rock enemy and start using curling stone in the next level, which is actually one of my favorite power-ups. I really like uh, curling stone movement, and hopefully when you guys see it, I can sort of explain how it works properly. It's a little bit involved. And then of course here we got our good friend DDD carrying us through. So yeah, as I mentioned after that level, uh, we come back here and then this axe enemy way over here with this rock let me go into the next level with curling stone <clears throat> now the main reason why we switched to curling stone from the drill it's actually slower for the first uh, portion of this level but it saves a lot of time at the end of the level where we actually have to swim down in the water so what we do instead of like when we had drill we had to actually swim all the way down the screen but with Curling Stone, you actually sink a lot faster. So that saves... I think it was... 
I want to say a good, like, 10 seconds or so, but that might be sort of an overestimate. I don't remember. It was so long ago that we started doing this. <clears throat> and yeah, another thing about uh, the curling stone movement, so you might see that I'm sort of running and jumping and breaking it pretty often. Uh, I think it was Swordsman Kirby who found out that the the curling stone actually is faster than your top running speed for approximately 40 frames. So what you try to do is break it as you're on the way down of a curl, so like right here. And you just gotta keep doing that over and over again, and collectively it adds up and it's a lot faster than just uh, running all the time. It's pretty pretty neat little bit of movement tech there. And here's where the main time save is. So we curl and then we just kind of sink all the way to the bottom. Oh, so Kirby kind of becomes like a little weight. Yeah, he's a... Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the sport uh, curling. I think it's mainly like a Canadian thing. Oh, yeah. No, I am, but... but... Yeah, yeah, it becomes a curling stone. Interesting. <laughs> pretty, pretty cute little thing they put that in here. That is cute. I was going to ask you, though, why does Kirby cry at the end of the level? <laughs> <laughs> he cries whenever you don't pick up a little treat for him or something. Aww. Or pick up anything at the picnic, I guess. So okay. I can grab something right here. I'll grab a tomato, actually, because I could use some health. Kirby needs a treat. <laughs> yeah, there he gets to eat. He's all happy. But yeah, if you don't grab anything, he just kind of cries. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I had the manip still going, I actually would have kept the curling stone for this level. Because uh, normally you have to get the light bulb power up to reveal a pattern that you have to press like a bunch of stones later on to get a shard to appear. But with the manip, you already know what the pattern is, so you can just take the curling stone all the way through. And like this first screen, for example, is a lot faster. Uh, because of the movement that I mentioned earlier. Like how it's faster than the top running speed. Nice. And here we actually... So this is like one of the only Kirby games where the floating that you do actually has a limited amount of time that you can float for. But if you take damage, then that counter resets, so we actually damage boost off those cannons on the walls. And then we get this little sound effect here. Probably my favorite noise in the game right there. Do you have Kirby's it as, like, like a phone off. alert? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you actually? What's that? Do you have it as, like, a, a phone notification or an oh, alert or no, something? No. <laughs> Time to change it, Curtis. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I think it was Tree Star Moon? Nice. Yeah, that would be a pretty great, like, text message tone. I'd never even thought of that. <laughs> there you go. more floating here. The chin strap of his hat keeps sort of moving up. <laughs> Never worn this thing. I'm not super uh, comfortable to it. All right, and then that pretty much concludes this level. Just got to do some more jumping here. And the next level, we got like about a minute. 10 seconds of downtime because we kind of just stand still as this belt goes all the way up, or this elevator run. Right on. Well, then, Curtis, let so me guess, ask you oh, okay. how you kind of got into speedrunning just in general. Like, tell us about your experience. Yeah, so uh, I mentioned I started running this, I think, June 2018. Earlier that year, February, I did a casual playthrough of it on stream. And I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, and before playing this game, I also played uh, Ratchet and Clank, like the remaster on PS3. I played through that, and I thought that was great as well. And then when it came summertime, I sort of thought to myself, like I'd been watching people do speedruns for a long time. I think about two years. Like I think I started watching speedrunning in 2016, really. Uh, so when the summer was coming up in 2018, I was trying to decide on a game to play. And it was between this or the Ratchet and Clank remaster that I mentioned, and I went with this and never looked back. <laughs> I right enjoyed on. it ever yeah. since. 
that's awesome. I uh, I actually wondered too, like how big is the community for something like Kirby 64? Do you get a lot of support um, and people collaborating? Uh, yeah, so the community, I mean, the activity sort of goes up and down. Uh, it depends if, you know, some new thing comes out, but uh, typically, yeah, whenever new uh, strategies or, you know, timing differences are found, uh, there's a bunch of people working together to sort of gather all that information and, you know, put it all together into one run and try and get the fastest time possible for the game. Nice, awesome. So yeah, definitely over time I've seen my share of uh, more activity, less activity. It just, it comes and goes. It's one of those games that it's not super popular, but people always seem to enjoy it whenever you go back to it. I don't see how you couldn't enjoy it. It's just so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a happy, yeah, cute the, game. <laughs> the look of it is just so vibrant, and the music is great. Like It, it really is a fun speedrun. I, I do love running this game. So if you're going to suggest like someone who has never played a Kirby game in their life, like where would you suggest they start? Uh, so, honestly, the newer game for the Switch, uh, Forgotten Land, is a really good title. Uh, okay. So if you got a Switch, I would definitely recommend that one. It's a little bit different from usual Kirby games because it's sort of like a it's a 3D game in the style of like something like Mario 3D World rather than you know being open world. So it's got a lot of exploration. It's got a lot of power ups. It's a really cool game, <clears throat> a really cool game in general. Uh, but besides that, I think for more of like a traditional 2D approach, I would, I would probably recommend my two favorites: uh, this game and Kirby and the Amazing Mirror on the Game Boy Advance. I think those games are both fantastic. Awesome! Thanks for the recommendation. Yeah, of course. But let's be honest, who at this point has not played a Kirby game in their life? <laughs> Listen, I was asking for a friend. Wink, <laughs> wink. Sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, also, I, I wanted to mention sort of at the beginning of this level, uh, pretty funny meme that we always bring up. So I actually commentated uh, Swordsman Kirby's run at SGDQ 2019. And for some reason, when we got to this level, I was like, this is one of my favorite worlds. It's got a nice, oceany, watery aesthetic. <laughs> I just, I described it in the weirdest way possible. And when we went back and watched the VOD, someone in the chat was like, uh, I think that's called a beach. And like, <laughs> ever <laughs> oh since God. then, we've just, we just always brought that back up. It's so funny. <laughs> Describing everything but the actual beach, like, word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thinking of every word possible except the word beach. So yeah, things like that, things like sand dross, just memes that have stuck for so long at this point. <laughs> Which kind of just adds to the fun overall. Oh, definitely. Alright, so yeah, here we actually... We gotta be thick Kirby for a little bit. We carry this rock power up until we combine it with a fire enemy a little bit later. Uh, and normally, when you got the Manip going, when you fight this mini boss coming up, the big crab enemy, you have to shoot exactly eight shots of the volcano before going to the river section. So, <clears throat> it's made a lot harder with the Switch audio delay, counting all of those shots. So, <laughs> that's. Oh. Like, definitely one downside of uh, playing on the Switch version. How much one of a with... delay is it for you? I mean, when you hear it on paper, it's not, like, too bad. It's, like, uh, probably... If I had to give an estimate... Oh, one sec. <laughs> Gotta get rid of this guy real quick. If I had to give an estimate, probably, like, I don't know, a tenth of a second. Something really small. But oh, okay. When you when you run the game, you do notice it. Like, it is very noticeable. For a casual playthrough, it might not be as noticeable. That, that makes sense. I, I understand what you mean. Mm -hmm. And then actually, again, if I had Manipso going, usually for this section here with the boat, <laughs> you oh have to Oh my god, they're little arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time they jump, they're like raising their arms. Like, we so adorable. Yeah, typically, like, there is actually a route to follow here, because, like, at certain points, if you stay on the ground for too long, you'll advance RNG, and, like, 
there, there is actually like a fastest way to do it and a way to do it with uh, the manip still going. Which definitely adds to the challenge of carrying the manip all the way through the game. Now, if you hit something, does that just like ruin it, ruin the whole sequence? Uh, I wouldn't say it ruins the manip. Uh, hitting something, thankfully, doesn't like mess with the RNG value. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, yeah, it's it's mainly things like um, after you do any sort of action and then stay on the ground for about like a third of a second, then RNG will change. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, usually you. Hitting something usually does not mess with that. Okay, cool. Good to know. Also, I, I know my viewers are going to be upset that I didn't do the thing. So normally when I go down those waterfalls, there's three of them before that crystal. And uh, usually I do, I reference the uh, Tootsie Pop commercial whenever I go over them. I always oh do the a one, a two, <laughs> a three. And then grab the shard right there. So <laughs> A three. I wanted to make sure I did that so I didn't disappoint anybody. And here, <laughs> this climb is actually pretty funny, because, like, you're fighting against all these enemies on the platforms, you're uh, fighting against going up slopes, which actually makes your horizontal speed slower, you're fighting against water that's going against you, which slows you down, so it's like, you gotta keep jumping that whole time, you gotta keep using the fire attack, like, pretty hectic part of that level right there. And here's one good thing about uh, not <laughs> having the Manip intact still, is that uh, for this level we use the rock and cutter power to transform into Kirby's animal friends. And later on we're going to need Rick the hamster in order to climb up and grab uh, one of the shards later on. So Manipless, since we're not getting it first try, uh, it's pretty random how many times you can get it, so if you guys want to get your guesses in for how many times it's going to take to get Rick, whoops. No, no, that's always a fun little thing to do. What's like a safe guess? Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say there's any safe guesses, because it could be anywhere from 1 to 27, I think is the worst. Okay, 1 to 27. But... <laughs> Put your uh, guesses in the chat. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say five. I think that's a safe bet. All right, I'm going to go with three. All right, yeah, typically it's lower. It's, it usually doesn't hit the 20s, but it can. It, in <laughs> the, it does, that's, that's just terrible. In unexpected circumstances, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here we got this cool little like, slide off of that rising platform. That was like a little tweak somebody came up with a little while ago. Some cool movement tech here. And then here's where we do the combo for the rock cutter power, and there is actually a way to sort of keep running and jump and spit the power into this enemy, but I'm gonna take the safe route and just sort of stand still and grab that power. Don't know if I uh, want to lose any more time here, because Rick could lose enough. All right, and here we go. So once we get over to that other side of the wall here, is where we start the counting. So we got one, two, three, four, all right. That's actually a very common outcome. Fourth try, it's not too bad. All right, I, what, what did you guess, five? I guess five. Yep. Okay, and Nothing I guess three. three. Yeah, so <laughs> with our powers combined, Curtis. <laughs> just, Good just job. Just average it out, and we got it. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, actually, yeah, normally with Manip here, you transform into the bird and then fly all the way up. Uh, but obviously, I could <laughs> be a whole nother <laughs> slew of time loss if I go for that here. Yeah, I think between those Rick attempts, it's like a second and a half each time you don't get the correct one. So it can be pretty brutal if the count gets all the way up there. <clears throat> and then here we just transform again. 
In pretty much the same principle as the curling stone earlier, we sink to the bottom way faster than just sort of swimming down. So then what is this one now? Just covered in rocks? Uh, you mean the animal friend? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I forget that one's name. I think it's Choo Choo. Oh, the okay. animal friends, they, they don't actually make any appearances in this game other than through that power. I think they came from Dreamland 2. Oh, was interesting. Their origin. Hmm. <clears throat> and then in Dreamland 3, you could actually, like, ride them and use them to get a whole bunch of secrets and things that you need to 100% the game. Oh, right. 100%. Game, <laughs> yeah. This game <laughs> just got relegated to a simple power-up, unfortunately. In that previous room, I feel like I should mention this, but with the manip, you actually do have to count all of the rocks that fall and break in the background. You have to count them and then use that to sort of determine how you're going to play out the final room of this level in order to keep the manip going. So doing that can be a little bit tricky, especially because sometimes you get these bomb enemies right there that blow up while the rocks are falling and sound like the crashing rocks, so <laughs> they can sort of throw you off. So this level is definitely one of the tougher ones for the minute to get through, I would say. And this little mini boss is pretty cool here. So we throw the first bomb, so we get caught in the alcove, we throw the next three, we sort of fall backwards with the current, and then we're out. Nice. Nicely done. <laughs> and here, if you're not paying attention, the run could actually die here. So in the third <clears throat> third or fourth little hole in the ground, we got another shard. So to make extra sure I grab that. But if you miss that, the current of the water is actually so strong that you can't swim backwards and grab it if you miss it. So that's just run dead oh man wow <laughs> how, how many shards are there that's a good question i i know the number but i can't think of it right now oh no worries i was just kind of curious how many we would be picking up along the way <laughs> i think i want to say there's 28 levels in this game and then there's three per level and one per boss fight but yeah i, I can't think of a number right now yeah no I worries Someone in the chat, can you math? Can I what? I was asking chat if they could do a little math for us. Oh. <laughs> I thought you said someone in the chat was asking me to like do something. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, who here is good at math and can do that? Also, I feel like I'm obligated to say this, but fun fact, this orca whale named Acro Guess what acro is spelled backwards? That's right. Orcus. Because he's an orca whale. Hey. Pretty clever stuff. If I do say <laughs> so myself. Nintendo really putting on their thinking caps for that one. Or I guess how laboratory technically, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they did a good job either way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, this level right here, I mean, this first room can look super buttery smooth if you do it properly and avoid everything. Let's see if I can do that. It's just always cool to me because, like, you'd never lose your running speed and there's all these things thrown at you that you kind of just keep going, except for that. <laughs> Ignore that, what just happened. <laughs> And somehow those spiders, when they fall, they explode. I never understood that. Also, those purple birds that you see right there. So actually, the fastest horizontal movement in the game is if you inhale one of those birds and then hold it above your head. That's actually the fastest you can go horizontally. It's faster than... Uh, actually, I gotta double check that, but... I was gonna say it's probably faster than a, like single fire, double fire, but I don't know the legitimacy of that exactly. <laughs> I guess it doesn't come into play too much when you're going vertically. 
No, we, we never pick them up or anything. Right, we right. Just leave them alone. So you've always got power, and unfortunately, you can't uh, pick up any of the enemies when you got a power. And here, we just got a bunch more stuff to avoid. The room's actually kind of interesting, so I jumped off of that swinging log down there. If you jump off of it when it's moving its fastest, horizontally, you actually carry that speed after jumping. So that's a jump that you do actually have to time well. Also, funky music. <laughs> Got to say this with the first lollipop, but... Another sort of channel meeting we got. Whenever we grab the candy, we all kind of break out and dance. <laughs> so, music is just so good. So what you're saying then, if uh, the people want to participate in the memes, they need to follow you on Twitch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All there right. You go. <laughs> Let's get a shout out going for Curtis mods. Can we get that happening? Just too many memes that you don't want to miss out on. Also, right here, so at the end of that last level, we picked up the rock enemy. We actually have to backtrack to combine it with that bomb enemy to get this dynamite power up. And I would say this is one of the harder levels casually, because you have to carry this power up all the way through pretty much the whole thing uh, towards the end in order to get one of the shards that's behind a brown and black wall. And... The thing that makes it worse is that those two powers, Bomb and Rock, are actually not available in this level. So you do actually have to bring it in from somewhere else and carry it all the way through. So, I mean, for my casual playthrough and for a lot that I've seen other people do, uh, it's very easy to either die making it all the way to the end of the level or lose the power or something like that. So definitely one of the trickier casual levels. This is wild to see because I've never seen like a, a you know, little rail level in 3D before. <laughs> yeah, the camera work is really cool here. Also, so I'm, you might see that I'm jumping a whole bunch. That actually has a purpose. So every time you jump, you move for, I think, one frame a little bit faster. So that all adds up and you could actually save... I think since it's a 30 FPS game, it's probably, you know, if you jump like 60 times, probably about two seconds of time save. If you just keep jumping. And that, that actually is also important for the manip, because again, just like the, the rafting section, if you stay on the ground for too long after jumping, then RNG will advance and everything will get screwed up. Oh yeah, I bet. And here, I think I mentioned earlier, but slopes actually ruin your horizontal speed. So combined with slopes and water running against you, you actually have to keep jumping there as well, because you're just going to go way too slow if you try to run on the ground at that point. Here, I, I don't know why I'm still jumping. I don't have to anymore. Just because so it's to. fun. <laughs> I just, I really like the sound effect that happens every time you jump. It's perfect. And there we throw the dynamite just to break our fall so we don't bounce off the ground. So as I mentioned, you carry the power all the way here. And finally, you no longer need it. Except for the speedrun, because it makes this mini-boss really fast. So you can sort of take out each wave. Well, if you can aim properly, you can take out each wave pretty quickly. And you got a tomato there to heal you up, in case you took a lot of damage throughout the run. So where are we, Curtis? Like, what's going on? <laughs> I couldn't really tell you. I know we're on, uh, I believe it's called Neo Star. We're just kind of like in a mountain, I guess. <laughs> okay, mountain. Yeah, I could see that. Here, Here's like the inside of the mountain, and then the next level is the, I guess, top of the mountain, and then the next level is a volcano. So it's a whole bunch of mountainous places here, besides the jungle at the beginning of the world, which I don't know how that fits in, but... <laughs> just, we'll just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> so here I got that drill power-up that we 
didn't use in World 2. And actually, when you have the drill active, you're going at the same speed as your running speed. And you need it right there to break that orange block. Whoops. Now you gotta avoid these guys. And get rid of your power. <laughs> or just run through them. And then, once again, we'll be switching back to Curling Stone. And this level is actually one of the cooler uh, exhibitions for the Curling Stone. There's just so many... There, there's so much weaving and dodging here and going through all these enemies and getting it to work over all these like uneven platforms is a pretty fun challenge, but it looks super cool when you do it properly. And then coming up here on the next screen, we're actually going to see a painting from Adeline be either an umbrella, yep, of course. That's actually the slowest. It's either an umbrella, a pizza, or a top hat. Whoops. Oh, those are break that pattern <laughs> a lot of here. choices. Yeah, of, course, of course I got the slowest one during a marathon run here. Oh, I knew I was gonna do that. <laughs> You're not supposed to break that middle block at the top. Let's see if I can do it correctly this time. No, what was that? <laughs> You got this, Curtis. Next one. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, typically with uh, the Manip, you do the top hat, because that is the slowest by far. I need to just take that slowly next time. <laughs> yeah, typically you do the top hat, because it's faster than both uh, pizza and the parasol here. I always call it umbrella, but I think it's technically a parasol. Oh my goodness. So you're trying to right, create gonna... the shape right now, or...? Yeah, I'm trying to create the umbrella shape. You, you might okay. see it once I actually get it done here, but I'm just going to take it slow. I'm not even going to bother it. <laughs> Wag strats here. There we go. Alright, cool. So that's an umbrella. <laughs> right on. Yeah, out of all three of them, not only is Umbrella the, or Parasol, I guess, the toughest, but it's also the slowest, so it's kind of a double whammy when you get that. So it's just kind of random? Yeah, it's uh, one of those things that's controlled by the net, thankfully. I gotcha. <laughs> so if you carry it all the way here, you don't even have to worry about doing that pattern. And also, here at the end of the level, we get a fun little thing with the platforms to spell out Kirby. Oh, that's a nice touch. <laughs> Pretty cool. And actually, I asked a Japanese runner before, uh, because the Japanese version doesn't spell his name in Japanese there, it's still spelled in English. And I asked one of the Japanese runners how come they didn't do that, and he just said, English is cool. And I said, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're all here today speaking to each other in English, so I, I agree, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with the Manip, this level is, I would say, by far the hardest to get through with the Manip. Because those firebirds, every time they drop a rock, they mess with RNG. Every time the enemies come up from the lava, they mess with RNG. And you also have to keep track of like how high they jump. Uh, just a whole bunch of things, and like the rocks that were falling in the first level or the first room of this level. All of those rocks advance RNG every time that they spawn. So it's just it's so much. But I'll be honest, you don't even really keep track of all of it. You sort of just play, and then uh, depending on certain scenarios, so say, like, the enemies that come out of the lava, if they jump a certain height, then depending on what height they jump, you would sort of adjust what you do for the rest of the level. So like that one right there that I just beat was not supposed to jump that high. <laughs> Normally it would jump a lot lower, but... Uh, we are not using they have, right now. They have other plans <laughs> for you, Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get in the way as much as possible. <laughs> I 
trying to think of all the other things that sort of mess with RNG here. Yeah, so those little enemies you see coming out of the lava. Firebirds every time they drop a rock. Whoops. Sparkies, whenever they jump, they advance RNG once, and then whenever they do their spark attack, they advance it twice. Just way too many things going on here. <laughs> in all corners of the level. I don't know if this is um, obvious or not, but can Kirby fall off to the sides, like, kind of, I guess, we're facing, like, looking at the level from the side. Like, can, can Kirby fall off on the right, like, from his point of view? Uh, like in the the Z axis, I guess, or like the I, third I guess. dimension. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if, like, you can fall, like, forward, basically. You you can't, no. That would, be, okay. that would have been kind of a cool feature. If they <laughs> I was like, because this, this looks so challenging and I'm just getting nervous watching you play. Yeah, yeah the, <clears throat> the way the camera works, it uh, works super well with like the two and a half dimensional thing they got going on here. Pretty cool how they did it. Pretty convincing that you could fall off in the third dimension, though. <laughs> Surprised you can't. That would have been a funny addition. Whoops. Try not to get burned here. Also, double fire, if anybody here has seen any percent, if you're very familiar with that power-up, because it's like probably a good 50% of that speedrun is just double firing. <laughs> Curtis, someone had brought up a multiplayer for this game earlier, which I didn't even know was a thing. Is that something yeah. that um, anyone speedruns? Uh, so, people in the past have sort of, I think there's actually a leaderboard on somewhere other than speedrun.com where people have actually uh, kept track of like the 100 yard hop times that they've got. Okay. And I think uh, Swordsman Kirby, who I mentioned before, actually played that game with one controller connected to all four ports because oh my gosh. <laughs> the minigame has this weird thing where whoever's in the lead, it will send out a little frog to sort of get in your way. So basically, you controlled every single position at once, so that if one of them got hit by the frog, it, the others could keep going, and then you used that to get the absolute fastest time possible. That's really it's impressive. It's actually a pretty, pretty funny video. I think he did, he did that many years ago. It's not recent, but it's a pretty Still. funny video. I wish... I don't know where to find it, but... <laughs> oh, <laughs> there are ways. If you search if yeah. you search chat, you might be able to find that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you search, like, Kirby 64 100-yard hop leaderboards or something, you'll be able to find it. All right, so that's World 4. That was our good pal Magman, the Lava Man. We just defeated with fire somehow. And then here, we actually pick up fire right at the beginning of this world. And if I remember correctly, you actually can't get single fire at any point along uh, World 5. I think until 5-4. So it's pretty important to hang on to it for a while. Although in 5-2, and you'll see why, we actually do have to get rid of it for a certain power combination. Uh, for a pesky part of the run that makes Manipolis runs kind of a pain. <laughs> but I'll explain that when we get there. Uh, but coming up here, we have a similar scenario to the minecart and the river raft where we're actually going to get on a sled with Waddleby. Let's go. <laughs> got the waving hands again. Waddley has a license, correct? Uh, sure. <laughs> Hopefully. Definitely. Seems like a pretty good driver to me. Pretty good sled <laughs> driver. Whoops. And yeah, this again, is... So... Sorry, go oh, ahead. Sorry, what's that? I was just going to ask if they were best friends. Uh, it's... I think it's kind of blurry. Because, you know, in a lot of things, like the... 
Kirby anime and a bunch of the other games, uh, DDD and the Waddle Dees are his enemies, and they're always fighting against him, but in this game, they're all good pals, so I think it kind of depends on what either game you're playing or the show you're watching or what. Yeah, somebody in the crew is nice enough to put the picnic blanket out, so they must be yep. cool. <laughs> <laughs> Gather all the friends together. It's crazy they have those picnics even when it's super snowy, like on this mountain here. I mean, it doesn't they, even matter. They're just they, they gotta eat. Picnics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to hang out. And here, this is actually kind of funny, so in the early days of this game being on Switch, there was actually a glitch where if you were underwater and you took damage, and then after you took damage you got bumped by something else, you would get softlocked. Like, Kirby would get completely softlocked and you would lose control of him and you would pretty much have to, I think, exit the level or reset the game entirely, but thankfully they patched that out. Because that would make speedrunning on this version kind of annoying. <laughs> like, even more annoying than it can be with the input delay. And here, there's a big mountain, so basically what we do is just fire and keep floating so we get over that guy. And then now, is it, straight to the end. is it easy to lose your momentum here when you're flying? Do you have to time this properly? It, it can be, yeah. So after a fire is finished, uh, you keep the increased horizontal speed for a short amount of time. So that's why I was doing like very short uh, floats in between each fire. Oh, okay. And so this is my favorite music, by the way, in the whole game. <laughs> I love the stage up in the cloud. Kirby's spinning is out of control. Above the cloud. Yeah, so here, uh, this is the level we actually get rid of the firepower for a little bit. Uh, you're gonna see further ahead, so we have to get rid of fire and then pick up the needle power up. And we're gonna combine it with Sparky, the electric power. Because we need that combination to get a shard at the very end of the level. But the problem with combining with Sparky, you know, since we're in the clouds and there's like pitfalls everywhere, there's just holes in the clouds. Uh, Sparky tends to jump off the stage very often, <laughs> so a lot of times you gotta just keep respawning him in, which can make getting that combination really annoying. But uh, thankfully, with the Manip, I believe he's manipulated so that he does a short hop to the left, <laughs> so that there's no danger of him going off the stage. Normally, if he jumps to the right, he'll jump into a hole and you gotta run backwards and respawn them real quick. So, whoops, here's the needle power. I almost want to, like, not <laughs> talk anymore to let people enjoy this music. This level. Bring it up, Richard. <laughs> yeah, okay, here's the very long room. We gotta get our combination. And there, for those enemies, they actually uh, jump to a height that you're at by the time they activate their power, so you have to run down into the pit a tiny bit. Oh, Sparky, no! Come back! Please, no! <laughs> yeah, so you saw right there, he just sort of ran off the edge. Whoops. I don't want to rush this. There we go. Sparky's just living the best life right now. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, if you miss that combination, you gotta go all the way back, grab the needle power up again, and then run through this whole room again. So I wanted to take that easy. And here we sort of just keep spamming our attack, and we broke that block in the middle that was orange and yellow. Let's get the last shard. And then we got a picnic in the clouds. That sounds awesome. I want to go to a picnic in the clouds. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it 
Chat, what would you bring to a picnic in the clouds? I'm curious. It's gonna be a wild experience. <laughs> Not gonna oh, lie. definitely, definitely. This level is really cool. It's got like the abandoned mall theme going on. And also you got these escalators that sort of push you faster along. So even though you're going up a slope, it is faster to be on the ground there. Oh, I like this a lot. This is a cool level design. Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely one of my favorite level designs in the game, I would say. It's very unique. And here you go up a whole bunch of escalators and face all these waves of enemies. And the escalators are controlled by like a little crank. It's like an abandoned mall made of old poise or something. Or be the explorer. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually funny because I mentioned uh, Kirby and the Forbidden Land earlier, I think. It's been a while since I played that game, but a lot of the levels are abandoned malls, so it's almost like they took a lot of inspiration out of this specific level. Alright, we grab that shard, and then once again, we got an aniline pattern. So these fruits determine the colors you have to push down. So red, orange, and green. And should go without saying, but with the manip, you just get the first three colors there. So it's the fastest pattern there. So if you get something like orange, that's all the way to the right. And you gotta run all the way to the right, and then run all the way back to get the shard, and then finally you can leave the room. Rather than just being able to... No! I was not supposed to do that. <laughs> uh, that's fine, though. I can finish up this level, and then I'll grab the uh, needle power-up somewhere else. Kirby's getting lost on the way to the glamour shots, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, normally you're supposed to combine those two for the drill, but... I, uh, I messed up that timing pretty badly. I will admit, but it's okay. Thankfully, you don't need the power for uh, the rest of this level. It's mainly for the next one. Honestly, not even that bad. <laughs> and then here, these cannons actually predict where you're going to be at the time of shooting, so they're actually really good at aiming. So you gotta sort of trick them and run around these cannonballs while keeping your momentum. Just like that. <laughs> See, Curtis knows what he's doing. I swear I've played this game before. It might not seem <laughs> like it, but I have. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go back here and get the, uh... Actually, I'm gonna do the easy combo. Get you, spit you forward, and bam. Then we come back here. <clears throat> this level, I know, is a lot of people's uh, favorite songs in the game. The factory level. It's got a cool thing going on with, like, the mechanical sounds in the background. Are they making puzzles in this factory, perhaps? Yeah, they're building this game in the factory within the game. <laughs> oh my goodness. Very inceptive thing going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. This part right here, I'm going to try my hardest to skip the final hammer, but it is pretty precise. But uh, basically, you got the conveyor belt going against you, so once again, just like with the water sections earlier, you got to sort of keep jumping as you're running to avoid getting slowed down. Alright, there's one hammer skip. This one you actually cannot skip, I think that one's impossible. I don't know if the task can do it, though. I have to look back into that. Okay, that one right there, normally... You can skip it if you go fast enough. I didn't really want to risk it. So I would just have to do this whole room again and lose a bunch more time. You don't need to do that. 
Oh, that was strange. It, it seemed like uh, King DDD was like looking right at us. <laughs> yeah, very strange moment there. And I also love, I've always loved how he sort of like throws Kirby into the next room. It's always just like a funny touch. He's like, get out of here, kid. <laughs> and here we combine for the Darth Maul Saber. One of the cooler powers in the game. Which we need to break that cage right there. And damage boosting there is actually the faster way to take out that boss. I swear, that was intentional. That that room is actually another very tricky part of the manip, so... Like, earlier on, there's a flower enemy that falls either to the left or the right. Depending on which way it goes, you have to advance RNG a certain amount from that point on. And with that mini-boss room, every time the Firebird drops a rock, you have to actually listen for it, because it's off-screen at some point. But you gotta count all of those, and then when you get to this room, you gotta sort of, like, stand still and duck and keep advancing a little bit more, so... There's a lot of counting, a lot of paying attention going on here in this level. At least when you got the Manip going. And here you got these things on the left and right walls that sort of close in on you. You gotta watch out that you don't get crushed. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Fuse there for a sec. There's actually a shard all the way over here. There's the last one for the level. Nice. And here, <clears throat> before we go into the boss, we gotta grab that electric power right there. And I'm just gonna grab this card here. So those cards show a different enemy, uh, depending on what RNG value the game is on when you grab it. Uh, and it's just sort of a fun little thing, like whenever you grab a card, to sort of show it off at the end of the run, see which enemy you got. It's like an in-game trading card type thing, except you can't really trade them. You can just collect them. Did oh, you wow. ever collect okay, any so, cards yourself? Uh, like real-life cards or in this game? Just real life, just curious. Uh, Pokemon? I, I definitely had a tiny bit of a Pokemon phase, a little bit <laughs> okay. of a Yu-Gi-Oh phase, but none of them ever really stuck with me for too long. Fair, Trading fair. cards were never super my thing. I gotcha. Also, so here with this HR fight, uh, that first phase, we actually got the fastest uh, phase you can get, so he did the clapping attack twice in three cycles. So three cycle HR is very good. Manipulus. So, nice little bandage there for this run that's been sort of bleeding out lately. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, running and commentating is not the easiest thing. I don't know how people do it so often, so well. Definitely tough to do, I agree. Yeah. Also, this level might look pretty familiar to a lot of you. It's actually... The exact same format as the first level of the game, 1-1, one, one, just got a different skin over top of it. And the enemies are a little bit different as well, but and it's also got the same music. <laughs> a lot of times we call this the DLC for 1-1. One, one. So it's literally just the exact same thing. And here I actually forgot, so I'm going to hold the power in my mouth for a bit. Because we're going to need the spike bomb combination up here. In order to do that, the easiest way, all we gotta do is just run straight into these bombs. And then we just fit for the combo. <laughs> and right here, the block we gotta break. And then we toss it before leaving. We actually gotta backtrack to grab the spark power up for the next level. This next level, it's got some spooky music to it. I've heard people say it's their favorite song in the game. I personally question the sanity of those people, but, you know, <laughs> to each of their own. <laughs> I think it reminds me of the uh, 
the Ocarina of Time forest temple music a little bit. Okay, okay, I can see that. Just because it's got like this super spooky thing going on. <laughs> got a lot of swimming here. We actually combine with that. We get the lightsaber again. And we gotta get more help from our temporary friend, King Didi. Who's gonna be our enemy in the next game, probably. Funny thing about uh, this power-up, so when you are holding the sword, if, even if you're in like the walking animation, you're still going running speed. So having the sword out actually is never really a bad thing. Whoops. And then here you can see it pokes out through the wall. <laughs> it's actually pretty helpful in determining how close we are to that shard that we gotta get. And we get some help from our friend Adeline, and it's time to dance yet again. This one's unfortunately a little bit short, but you can feel free to keep the dancing going into the next level, because the next level's got another unique, popular track that a lot of people consider their favorites in the game. There's so many good ones, it's hard to choose. Yeah, I know. Tough choice overall. This level's actually really cool. You just sort of keep the sword out and sort of aim left and right to take out the enemies, like, without even going near them for most of these rooms. And for the middle room, there's a really cool part that's always a lot of fun to commentate. Whoops, missed that guy. Whoops. Get back here. You're swinging this around, and I just hear the lightsaber sounds in my head. Going, <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's got the buzzing going on. So this room, you use the lightsaber to take out these first three enemies. Pull out the power, throw it forward to take out that guy. Get the fire, combine it with this needle enemy right here to get the fire arrow. Break this middle part, and then we pick up spark enemy. Combine it with this cutter enemy, and we leave once again with the lightsaber power. That level is always, or that room is always a ton of fun to go through. <laughs> And sometimes here, like with these last two rooms, I always have trouble uh, jumping, as weird as that is to say, because a lot of times, like, if you're still moving while holding a lightsaber and you do a jumping input, the game just won't register it. So, I don't know, these, <laughs> these rooms always seem to give me a bunch of trouble, but it seems like they're going well this time. There we go. Easy. And coming up next, we got the final regular boss, Miracle Matter. Uh, this boss is actually really cool because depending on sort of what phase he has out, you need to use that power to do damage. Also right there, that's really good luck. So you come in here with the electric sword, and if you get either Spark or Cutter first, then you can save a bunch of time. Whoop. Uh, a bit rough there. I wasn't paying too much attention, unfortunately. Usually, Spike is an easy one cycle. Now, what kind yes. of boss Whoops. is this? I don't it's even like know a like a D and D dice or something. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. It's got a crazy shape to it. I know there's a name for it, but I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> Like a dodecahedron or something. <laughs> I think the concept of it is really cool, though. It goes through all the powers, and you use those powers to take it out. You can also use combos to do it, too, which is neat. Here we got cutters. 
Whoops. It's actually funny, all of the phases require three hits to beat, except for Bomb, which only requires two. I guess that was to make the boss's health bar even or something. I don't know, that's my best guess. Alright, finishing up with Rock here. Cool. And then if the shard glows, we'll know that we've gotten all of them. Nice. Alright, so now we're going on to the final stage of the 100% run. This actually is not in the any percent run. This is technically good ending. So we're going to fight the, the horrifying final boss. I'm actually going to grab the health here just to be safe. Uh, we get to fight the pretty horrifying final boss, 0-2. Truly a thing of nightmares. I'm scared already. <laughs> just a uh, floating, bleeding eyeball. No big deal. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, basically the strat here is to shoot die eight times with sets of four shots. And then I'm going to go for a thing called one cycle. So basically, uh, we shoot this green spike here to deal damage. And then after 20 seconds of the halo being broken, he'll reset or try to reset. And you can actually hit the band-aid again to get back to this phase. So I'll see if I can get lucky enough to have that happen here. Whoops. Ah! I probably could have had that. I think I just went for too many shots in that first phase. Oh well. <laughs> also, I should mention, uh, time is going to be coming up when we get the final hit on 0-2 here. Dang, I didn't meet the estimate. <laughs> And time. Nice, GG. Thank you, thank you. Gosh, well, you know what? You put in so much time and effort de-rusting this Kirby, and I think I can speak for everyone when I say we super appreciate you being here to show it off. That was an awesome run, Curtis. Do you have any shout-outs or comments? Anything you'd like to tell our viewers before we wrap it up? Uh, yeah, shout-outs to everyone who is here watching. I really appreciate it. All the support. Uh, shout outs to the Kirby community that's made all the discoveries throughout the years. Uh, shout out to the runner Dark Riolu, who was the one that actually found the full game Manip that allowed us to save, you know, well over a minute uh, total. Um, so, you know, shout out to Swordsman Kirby for being one of my earliest mentors with this game. You know, such a good guy. He's been a part of a lot of GDQs as well. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with him. Uh, and yeah, just thanks everyone who's watched me play this game either now or from the beginning or whenever. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much, Curtis, for being here to show it off. Um, I'll post this in the chat, but if you did enjoy the run, make sure you follow Curtis here on Twitch. That is Curtissimo41. And uh, I'm sure you can expect more Kirby uh, from Curtis. But that is a wrap on tonight's episode of Time Capsule, everyone. If you are watching this on YouTube from the future, make sure to press the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and head on over to twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick if you're interested in checking out our shows live. We start weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern, week ends at 1 p.m. Eastern. Tune in tomorrow for How to Train a Speedrunner, followed by Speedruns from the Crypt, all starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. I have been your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions about Time Capsule at all in the future, feel free to follow me here on Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash smoothoperative. Have a beautiful day or night, and we will see you next time, friends. Goodbye.